Yo, ladies and gentlemen, I am MC Zimmon, and welcome back to Space Engineers Weekly Workshop Roundup number 7. And yeah, I've got uh, three ships and three mods, as always, for you guys here today. I want to say three ships. I do have three ships. I have a station and, um, well, something else is not really a ship or a station at all. You'll see what, you'll see what I'm saying, but yeah. So, I've got some really awesome stuff for you guys today, and I just absolutely cannot wait to bring it to you. So, the first mod that I have to show you guys today is, well, something I couldn't actually get to work. It's a little bit strange way to start off the, uh episode I'll admit but um yeah so auto door closer ignores airlocks by whiplash 141 that's this whole setup here as I said I couldn't get to work because I'm a noob at this sort of thing I don't know how to do scripts at all but so what it does for you guys who can get it to run is well first of all it's whiplash's first script so definitely hats off to whiplash for creating such an awesome thing uh, uh, for his first script. Um, so what it does is for each door open, the script counts the time it has been open and closes it after three seconds, if you can get to work. Like I said, I couldn't. Um, and all of it is done independently per door, so it sort of counts like it, uh, well, the description explains it better. Yes, the uh, so this is to say if player A opens door 1 a few seconds before player B opens door 2, each door will stay open for 3 seconds, regardless of other doors being open. No need to worry about accidental decompression because of negligence. So that's kind of cool. As you can see, this door has been open for way longer than 3 seconds now, so it, it's either something to do with the station that's on, or it's something to be uh, something to do with me being incompetent, which I'm kind of leaning towards the latter. Um, but so yeah, that's pretty much that done. It's a very simple, very very simple concept. And it's actually pretty cool. Uh, so the second mod that I'm going to go over is Clear Clean Windows by SRZ, and yeah, it's this. Well, as uh, Clear clean windows. Well, I think it's this at least. I tried placing down regular windows uh, like a so, like this, and for some reason, well, yeah, for some reason it's neither clear nor clean, but I believe this is the mod here. But yeah, so supposedly it sort of it replaces regular windows with uh, versions that are clear on both sides as well as clean. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be working in this world, but uh, well, working as intended. But so yeah, that's uh, that's uh, that's okay. It, yeah, as the description says, it updates the current windows. It will remove the tint shade on all windows to make them transparent. The window dirt is also being cleaned with a specialized AC SE space clear solution. Keeps your windows maintenance free, as we all like them. Yeah. So really, again, nothing special with this mod. Just sort of something that's a, that can be a little bit handy in certain scenarios like that door over there and some building scenarios you may want your windows to be clean and clear and that would definitely help of course there are a couple of other window mods out there that uh, make the windows look absolutely sick uh, uh, add new windows in I should say that look absolutely sick but for what's worth you know this is pretty lightweight it doesn't involve actually downloading like meshes and stuff so it's a pretty small mod as far as uh, size is concerned I would imagine so pretty handy stuff really pretty handy stuff so congrats to SRZ on making such an awesome mod apparently an awesome mod anyway if it worked I like I said I think this is the mod I don't know but anyway so yeah, you may have been noticing this guy floating around. This is 
Wally, Wally, version 3 by TechWave, the wandering astronaut loneliness inhibitor and RMA drone built to follow around lonely space engineers and inhibit space related depression. Just load some fuel into the reactor and hit the button down here twice to initialize. So, yeah, as you can see, he follows you around. Pretty neat stuff. And he also turns upside down, as you can see, which is really uh, cute. He turns upside down and just follows you around, follows you on his side. And he's got collision detection as well. So he's pretty much... Well, he's an AI that follows you around, just makes you all happy and stuff, or that face creeps you out, one uh, or something, you know, depends on who you are, all for the love of you. But I get there and it close up and I thought I saw the text change, that's a little bit strange, but yeah, he does have different facial expressions, so let's go over here, yeah, there you go, see he's happily just following along, he's looking at that, making sure he doesn't whack into it there. This is so cool! Like, how do you do this? This is so incredibly awesome, look at it! Look at him! So cute! He's so cute! Um, although, he is obviously too big to follow you through doors, which sucks a little bit, but, um, I can't imagine, uh, Aside from the whole cute factor, this is really awesome! But I can imagine you can like put a chest on him, and that would be incredibly, incredibly useful. Because he could then tow around like all your stuff and everything. So, um, chests. Ch uh, chests. Oh, well, they call them containers here. Yeah, so we could get a small cargo container, let's say, and then, uh, just puts the small cargo container on him and he can carry stuff now which would be really awesome it would be a little bit hard to actually get to the stuff which is why you have a power button right here see so you can turn him off and um, get your stuff out of the cargo container yeah really pretty cool stuff although he looks dead which is sad it looks like he killed him, which is, uh, I don't know, but yeah, so let's turn him back on here, if I can, yeah, <laughs> he just follows you around, this is so cool, he's got a beacon on him, so yeah, an automated drone built to follow around lonely space engineers and inhibit space related depression, I already said that, version 3 adds advanced collision avoidance and fixes that pesky hell syndrome that kept popping up, i tell you what, I had a little bit of, I don't know if it fixes, fixes it completely, in fact I know it doesn't because I had a little bit of a run in with that creepy stuff. When I first put him in to the world, creepy stuff, like all of the, all of the area here that wasn't text was red and just the background behind the text was black, I was like, oh, oh no, oh no. But then, turned him on, and it all went away. Now he's super happy and awesome. Or still really, really creepy, depending on how you look at it. Because, when you think about it, he knows where you are. He knows who you are. He knows where you've been. Yeah. And he knows where you're going to go. He follows you around. He watches you in your sleep while you're in your bed. And, um, yeah, I'm just gonna stop pretending that that is creepy and just sort of uh, calmly go over here to the ships and um, yeah, he's gonna follow me around and uh, hang out on the outsides of the ships because, and yeah, by the way, Siri's back, ladies and gentlemen, I could actually get her to paste in without causing too much frame rate BS this time. Uh, I am running at 8 frames a second, but you know what? It's worth it because Siri is love. Siri is life. And, wow, oh, love you, Siri. You're awesome. Stay awesome. Oh, so, so awesome. Where's Wally? Oh, uh, did I leave him? I think I left Wally, guys. Where are you? Is that. Does it. Uh, 
Does his name actually like freaking change? Does that name or his antenna actually change when you get far away? It does. Woohoo! Awesome! We're having a sick time, Wally. All right, come over here. I got some awesome stuff to to show you. Yep. Um. Woohoo! Yeah. Freaking awesome stuff. Actually, yeah. Come to think of it, I think you should just stay there for a second because you're not going to fit into any of these ships anyway. So, speaking of the ships, we've got the CA-10A by MMA. I don't know why I had to say it like that. I, <laughs> I'm weird, guys. I'm weird. You probably knew that if you've been a long-time viewer of this show, but I'm weird. Like, I am clinically clinically weird but yeah so this is the ca10a by mma no it, there's just there's no real description but it comes with the ship shield uh mod the sm thruster mod the interior door mill can turret pulse laser minotaur can and uh large ship rail guns and as you most industries mega mod pack um if you're wondering what all mods this ship uses and it looks absolutely sick it looks like well it, it looks kind of like the uh, red ship in fact it looks like a, a lot like the red ship that sort of comes with the game like um in those uh, two I think it's two survival worlds I don't know I don't I don't survive on much in this game guys I'm mostly just creative you know um yeah but just look at this, it's majestic. It's majestic. Like, this looks like something you wouldn't want to mess with. Look at all these turrets on it. And um, these, I think they are, I'm not sure what these guys are. Um, they look sick though. Oh, these are side thrusters, yeah. Um, those would be the SN thrusters. I couldn't rem remember, and now I remembered that I've actually got these. Uh, I've actually got these uh, thrusters just to use on my my own projects and yeah there's a lot of them there's a lot of them so I was wondering what those were but yeah those are the SM thrusters that look absolutely sick and everything and the turrets are just run it's just running amok with them I want to show you the front specifically before we get in because well you've got turrets 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 Turrets, 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 missile launchers, missile launchers, missile launchers, turrets, 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 missile launchers, missile launchers, missile launchers, turrets, 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 rail guns on the front. Like, oh my god, look at these. There's six of these guys. And I can attest personally to the fact that, well, uh, that, well, they're not meant to be used in V mode. Uh, uh, third person mode, but I can't test the fact that these guys are sick as far as power is concerned. And you can tell because just look at, look at them. What they do is they shoot a particle out through there and that's magnetically accelerated out and uh, basically it's hit scan pretty much. The, the freaking, uh, the freaking velocity of the rounds for these guys is absolutely stupid so it's a very very powerful ship it might be a little bit op in fact a little bit overpowered but i don't care it's what it just whatever brings the most destruction you know what i'm saying yeah you know what i'm saying so we're getting 16 fps that's actually not bad and these doors um i actually was going to showcase them in this video but decided not to because well, I spent a little bit too much time, and now they're not, uh, they're not on the Space Engineers, uh, the, they're not on the Space Engineers, uh, most popular one-week page anymore, so, but yeah, basically Death Star doors for your spaceship. Also, you can see where you're going, it's awesome, they look absolutely sick. There's my own little mini-review for you guys, but I have uh, disclaimer, I haven't actually been able to, good lord, that looks a lot bigger out the, out the port window, <laughs> but I haven't actually been able to explore these uh, ships yet, so this is going to be one of those reviews where I just wander around and say, hmm, 
here's this and here's this that looks awesome and everything but so yeah we are up here and it's sort of in a passenger lounge it looks like and we've got some passenger seats here that look um very passenger seat ish so you can sit here and you can just sort of look out the side although um uh these are actually mirrored here i don't know why but uh, not v mode thank you i want to get out of the chair there we go but so you can't really see through these as much as you could with um out here but yeah so you can just sit and have a gander and have a look and back here what do we have well we've got a staircase wonder where this goes this is a well it's a terminal it looks that's a strange looking terminal i don't think i've ever seen one look like that quite but that's oh yeah that is the um uh, well, that's a uh, that's a shield of some sort. One of these mods, ship shield. Yes, that's it. It's the ship shield. So that basically just draws fire. I think it works like a beacon. That's what the description said. But it basically, just draws fire and uh, works like a decoy. Rather, works like a decoy. Here, I'll admit I'm not exactly sure what this is. Maybe it looks like sort of a room where you could manage your oxygen and uh, uh, your oxygen system so it is actually an oxygenated ship as you can just see and yeah it's got turrets to protect the insides and everything looks pretty dang awesome-ish I assume it's the same on the other side but I haven't actually well there is only one staircase there <laughs> my bad but so let's take a look down here this is uh well this must be another shield room here you've also got a gravity generator there so yeah uh, just the yeah this is basically your shield core i would assume so you come he down here and you maybe have someone working here and then just continually checking these guys to make sure your shields are still up and running and then if they aren't uh, you could just sort of try to pull out the combat zone while the guy down here tries and fixes your shield so very cool indeed and then down here we've got a med bay with some uh with some timer blocks here that's what those guys are i didn't actually bother looking at the g menu i should have done that uh, whatever i got confused by those guys so where are we exactly i just want to make the route pretty clear to you guys i forgot to close something my bad <laughs> but yeah so hmm. actually what's down here oh this is um yeah this is uh engineering sort of i guess this is just sort of your yeah this is engineering down here so you would go through here to get to your reactor controls at some point. I'll admit I'm I'm a little lost because I've never explored the ship before. Like I said, yeah. So there's your reactor. I assume somewhere around here is where you would go to control it. Uh, let's see what's behind door number two here. Oh yeah, uh, just some uh, drive stuff, some uh, batteries, uh, battery powered hybrid ship. <laughs> yeah, I'm driving the Toyota Prius to ships once again. Yep, so it's a, bat it's a battery core here, which is awesome because you don't have to worry about having uranium for your reactor, you could just sort of store uh, energy generated by sunlight here and uh, you know if you ran off fuel you'd still be a-okay so that's pretty well thought out I assume here is oh uh, I thought this was an airlock here this is massive this ship is huge either it's huge or yeah that's an airlock that's definitely an airlock but so this ship is absolutely massive or oh, does it have the whole um 
doors closing after three seconds sort of thing? Because I thought that door just automatically closed. Hmm. That's weird. Anyway, so we go here and there's just some gyroscopes and stuff. Yeah, that door automatically closed. I assume there's just the stuff built into the ship. Some sort of script built into the ship. Or sensor. Or something. And not uh, the script that I had uh, running on the station over there. I believe it's over there. Yeah, over there. I assume it would be just something run on the ship navely, not some sort of interference from over there. It could be, but I don't know. I mean, this uh, world seems to be functioning a little bit strangely. And we've got, uh, in the process of talking, I've gotten lost and now we've ended up in the gyroscope room. This thing must turn like an absolute monster. I can only imagine. Look at all these gyroscopes and stuff. Yeah, absolutely crazy. So, let me... Actually, no. Thank you, door. <laughs> I got cut off by the door. That's nice. And, yep, going through here. Oh, it's got a gravity drive. That's that's cool. So, you can throw in the gravity drive and go zooming off just into the distance and all of that awesomeness. Uh, you again, door! I swear, is this door run by Hal or something? Mm. Mm. Hal! Hal, you big fat bitch! I swear, if you... If you... If you're actually a thing and you're just sort of... Infecting my freaking mod showcase videos, I'm gonna have your ass. I'm gonna have your ass something fierce, boy. I just, I just went full southerner there. I apologize, I just went full southerner there. Went full southerner there, but yep, so I just went to outside the ship and went along the side there, as you saw, and then uh, we've ended up back here in the area that apparently is supposed to be inhabited by actual people. And not drones like Wally. -E. But. Hmm. Oh. Oh, more shield cores? What? Okay, so I'm a little bit confused. There, There's a. This is another shield core here. Hmm. Well, uh, I know why, actually. The, um, the one that we just saw down there actually be. I guess that would be sort of like a backup shield core. And then this would be your primary shield core here. So if um, if this shield core for some reason got damaged, then you could kick on your backup shields that would be down there. So that's that's pretty cool. That's really kind of awesome. And yeah, in case you didn't notice, by the way, yes, this ship is coated, coated in heavy armor. So yeah, it's going to be able to take on a couple of fights. We've got thrusters within thrusters. I hope I've remembered to turn off thruster damage here. Hold on. So yeah, thruster damage is actually off, which is a bit of a relief because as you can see, we've got thrusters behind thrusters here. So yeah, that's a little bit of a relief. Um, I'll tell you what I haven't noticed in this, uh, in this uh, exploration of the ship. I haven't noticed, I don't think I've noticed a med bay. So maybe that would be a little bit further up. Yeah, we've got thrusters behind 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 thrusters here. Look at all of them. Seriously. Okay, jet back off. And oof. Just gonna slide on into the door there and then turn my jet back on. Alright, there we go. That's a little bit better. I thought straight forward would maybe be the bridge. But apparently not. Huh. So, let's go actually back down. Actually, let's go in down here and see if this leads to the bridge. I would assume not. Oh yeah, it does. Well, it leads to a bridge. Anyway, so, yeah, let's actually take control of this monstrous thing. Oh yeah. The turning is actually pretty decent. Do not whack into that ship. Thank you. Um, I, although I will say, okay, there we go. There we go. 
just pressing the wrong key. Again, I'm a noob, guys. I'm a noob, I admit. But, yeah. The acceleration is not horrible. Um, let's see how long it takes to get to uh, 25 meters a second here. Yeah, uh, by the way, stats 22 million uh, 59. Okay, that's actually over a lot faster than I expected, but yeah, not bad for a ship that weighs 22 million 59,410 kilograms by any stretch of the imagination. Um, as you can see, the reactors put out a pretty hefty uh, 756.02 megawatts. Um, yeah, well, hold on, where's the gravity drive? Huh. I thought he would have assigned the gravity drive to a hotbar key, but apparently he hasn't. So that's a little bit of a strange choice, but yeah, for uh, as heavy as this thing is, definitely not bad performance. And of course, as you can see, it's armed to the teeth, to the absolute teeth. It's got all of those cans, like I was talking about earlier, like I was uh, mentioning earlier a lot of cannons, just a lot of, a lot of stuff uh, to, uh, to make sure that you, that you can survive a combat scenario if you're pilot, piloted by somebody better than I am at flying these damn things. Uh, I'm terrible, I tell you what, I'm absolutely terrible at flying these. So let's have another check just to make sure we aren't missing a med bay here, because I could, I could swear this uh, this should have a med bay I can't maybe I've seen one just sort of pass by it hmm I don't know weird I definitely haven't seen a med bay so that's kind of kind of strange-ish hmm well I'm I'm not, I'm not sure I'm absolutely befuddled guys I think there'd be a uh, med bay here. That's kind of odd. Ah, huh. well. But anyway, so yeah. As if you couldn't tell, I'm a, I actually really like that ship. I can, I think. Uh, I think it would be really awesome, like in a, well, in a fight for one thing. But. Well, I, um. I'm not sure exactly. Well. It's a blueprint, obviously, so I think this would actually be sort of pretty cool to, like, put in a survival world and then, like, a blueprint, like a projection of it, put that in a survival world and then sort of say, that's what I want to work up to. And then over time, you could sort of work up to this as a replacement for the stock red ship. And that would be really, really cool and awesome. It would just look... Uh, it just looks like sort of a natural progression, a development of the red ship. That's what it looks like. It's got that sort of same overall shape almost. So yeah, pretty dang cool. And uh, next up we've got the Higurin, the, the Higurin Destroyer. Of, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. The um, Let's see. It's the Higurin Destroyer. And by, well, I'll admit I don't actually have the mod at all in my notes. That's, not, that's weird. Ha! Huh. But anyway, so, yeah, the High Ground Destroyer by, his name's up on the screen now. And, yeah, it looks really, really blue. <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty blue. And, and really Sort of, it looks almost like it doesn't have any mods until you sort of look at it as the armor thrusters here, as sort of built into the armor here. That's what I use on my on my small ships. Well, some of my small ships anyway, like the earlier ones. Um, and then recently, I've taken taken using uh, Azimuth Industries big thrusters, but. They look really well. I still use these the sort of side thrusters here, and then back here, Force has got the ever amazing Titan engines, two of them to be precise. And yeah, it looks almost like you could build it just with 
stock stuff and that's not that's not a bad thing it actually goes really well with sort of the game's default aesthetic just and of course you got sage's armor thrusters here but yeah it sort of goes with the game's default aesthetic but i do want to point out the fact that this looks more like a conventional like sea based battleship which is a really cool touch i think see look it looks like you could just turn off all the thrusters and then put in the ocean and it would just work like perfectly fine so that's pretty cool that's really cool in fact I like it when a ship does that it, it just you know it's just, just that sort of battleship like Navy battleship in space aesthetic really cool um, I can't find the door again <laughs> I can't find the door again it better not be on the bottom that's the most illogical place to put a door. Yeah, I'm gonna cut and come back when I find the door. Hold on, guys. Alright, so I'm actually in the ship here. I just decided to go ahead and cut my way into the ship. I removed that window there and then put back once I was inside. But yeah, the Hegrim Destroyer. Uh, pretty sick interior. I mean, look at this. This is, um, I don't know. I'm not sure exactly what this would be. That looks like the bridge over there, but I guess this could be sort of a weapons control area. This is a destroyer after all, but so this would match the weapons on the right hand side of the ship. Not entirely sure what this was intended as, but you got a med station here. Half-Life 2 med station in fact, which is, well it looks really cool and used up and like the, uh, like the stations in, uh, like the med stations in Half-Life 2 where you get health and everything, so kind of a little homage to one of the greatest games of all time. Uh, pretty neat de detail there. And, well, to either side you've got terminals and well, here you've got a passenger seat. And then here you've got the U-shaped, well, I guess the captain would sort of stand here or the, um, or the gunnery sergeant and he would look over all this stuff and make sure everything was all hunky-dory with the ship and the weapons more specifically and just sort of look over here and watch the weapons fire and everything if we go over here though we've got well we've got hangar doors yep big old huge clampy clamp hangar doors made of metal and awesome oh so sick so sick listen to it that's the sound of a hefty door if I if I ever heard one but so over here this is just uh, sort of the main hall it looks like uh, we've got a button here I dare not press it for reasons you guys have probably or possibly discovered by now if you watch my previous video um, hint hint <laughs> but so this is sort of the main hallway here I really like ships that have sort of this linear design to them. Um, really cool looking. Oh, this is an elevator. I gotcha. So this is a catwalk elevator mod. And the catwalk elevator mod. I can't remember remember who made it, but yeah. It's the catwalk elevator mod. And so you just go to either side and well, you've got catwalk elevators. I assume the door would be down there because whatever uh, because I don't think that would like uh, if you entered back there then uh, I think these guys would be uh, up here by default but yeah so uh, once we get through this section of the ship we'll go down there and check them out and this actually is not the bridge this is just um, an area uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what this is, it's just sort of an empty area. I guess this could be almost like a mess hall, come to think of it. So you could have all the kitchen stuff up here and then have your, uh, uh, have your tables here for your crew to sit at. And then just sort of bring the food out and have the crew nom 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 on it. So that would be that. And then let's actually take the elevators and uh, just jump down. Why not? We... Ow, broke my knees. 
Blue. Ah, I hate when that happens. Also, here are your crew quarters. This is weird. Your crew quarters, like literally, this ship is designed straight front to back. There, there aren't any real rooms that branch off to the sides. It doesn't seem. That's cool. That just makes things a whole lot simpler. And then here you've got a fighter bay. It looks like, hold on, does this actually open out to the outside world? Um, no. Uh, but yeah, this would probably be a fighter bay of some sort if you could figure out how to. Okay. Oh, holy crap! That's cool! That's cool! So, yeah, this would be a fighter bay or a drone bay or whatever you want it to be. So you could just put your fighter on here and here, and then uh, the sensors would automatically detect the fire, and then whoop! On up, you, you go there, and that's pretty awesome and stuff, and then you could just move... Well, if it's thin enough, for one thing, you could move it up here and you've, uh, this is actually a med bay here these two are med bays and then it, it is oxygenated and this is an airlock here so if i were to close that then if oxygen were active in this world that would light up green but right now it isn't since uh, uh oxygen is not active in the world so pretty pretty cool stuff definitely one of the coolest fighter bays i've seen so far, and I've reviewed quite a few ships by now, but so yeah, weirdly placed crew quarters, da 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 da, sinks, and um, lockers and screens and stuff. Actually, this would be an ideal place for your uh, fighter maintenance crew, excuse me for the bark there, but it would be a great place for your fighter maintenance crew to sleep. It, it just, it's literally just right there. You just go downstairs, you have that lift there, and you just go downstairs and start your work day. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. And straight back, what do we have? We've got these stairs here, and then a door that leads to a reactor room. Yep. So this is where all these pipes converge here. It's got a massive, massive hugely intertwined looking connector system here with a lot of reactors, a couple of MASSIVE main reactors, uh, three of them in fact, and then those are the engines back there. Well, I say those are the engines, those aren't the engines, those are engines behind... Actually, no, those are the main engines, because I just now remembered that Titan engines are actually sort of like that. They're this huge. They're massive massive engines so yeah not even just behind engines at all those are just the engines <laughs> and here just sort of yeah um just sort of a boring old meeting area just where all the hallways and stuff converge it looks like and then great place to get stuck on a handrail oh man i tell you what i for the, uh, I'm just enjoying this ship. It looks absolutely cool because it's sort of almost a perfect meld of uh, well, uh, the game's regular sort of default aesthetic and uh, aesthetics from like mods and stuff. Sort of, so sort of like half its own thing and sort of half what the what you can do with the game. Uh, by default, so pretty cool. And then let's go up here and Habiski, we are up, up, and up. And let's actually try to fly this. I think we've explored pretty much everything the ship has to offer. So let's go and actually fly it. This is gonna be hella awesome. I can tell right now. So, actually, hmm, it's a bit strange. I thought there was another bridge off to the side there. Apparently, there isn't, though. Hmm, that's a little bit odd. 
this is the main bridge. Hmm. I'm not entirely sure I like that 100%. Because you expect the bridge to be somewhere safe, but instead it's just sort of sticking here out to the side. Hmm. Yeah, very, very odd. Very odd. But yeah, so how does she fly? Well, she's a lot lighter than the other ship that we were just demoing. Knock something here. Hmm. Wasn't that little ship that I'm going to review in a while. Something's floating, f floating free in the ship, but good lord, the acceleration is huge. Yeah, the acceleration is just huge. And let's actually open up the G menu here. And drag uh, the R uh RIK 6140s and the Minotaur turrets and the rocket launchers to the hot bar and let's see what this thing can do as far as combat is concerned. This is going to be awesome, I think, maybe. Hey, let's turn here. Yep, the gyroscopes are not. Yeah, it's just no turning at all. So let's actually see what this can do. Hmm. I'm not sure which target I would rather have. These guys are absolutely freaking powerful, by the way. I just happen to know this. Yeah, they're... Hmm, that sound! That sound! It's massive! So let's actually see what we can do here. I hope we don't one-shot ship. I would assume that that's some pretty massive damage. That's actually all oh, the top turret came off. Well then, that's weird. Yeah, so we're actually damaging that heavy armor there. Pretty sick stuff. Pretty, pretty sick stuff. Let's see if we can get side thrusters here. Yep, we just opened up a hole there. I think that pretty much demonstrates what this thing can do as far as firepower is concerned. Of course the missile launchers. Well, let's actually go and test those guys out before we give it up here. All the missile launchers are actually off to the side there. That's that's kind of that's kind of cool. So you, uh, it's just broadside missile launchers there so it looks like we're actually doing not that much damage. I mean, we did get through that thruster, but that, those thrusters don't seem to be that durable. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd say that they actually were pretty effective. Even though I said we weren't doing that much damage, just actually look at the amount of damage we did in such a short amount of time to the red ship here. Yeah pretty big stuff, especially with the detonation, that thruster and everything, but, well, actually, come to think of it, yeah, let's, let's go and see what the red ship can do, I'm, I'm just gonna place a cockpit here, because I don't want to freaking, I don't feel like just going through that whole labyrinthine inside again, so, uh, let's just hop onto the cockpit here, and, Back, back, back it up, bah! Back, 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 back it up, bah! And then open up the G menu, first of all. And then add our real guns, our minotaurs, and our rocket launchers to the hot bar. And let's actually see what this can do. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna show you these real guns first because they're sick. Like they're monstrous as far as power is concerned. So let's get sights on you there, Mr. Higuran Destroyer. Hmm. Yeah, they take a day and a half to reload though. Where are the, where are the, okay, there are the dots. Yeah, as you can see, 
I say they're massively powerful. Oh yeah, they are massively powerful. But as you can see, they've uh, they're very precise. Like they don't leave. Uh, they don't have a huge AOE. Basically, is what I'm saying. They don't have a huge area of effect. So yeah, they they're just mainly meant to be very very precise. And this diamond bonded glass that this ship uses is supposed to be some pretty serious stuff so let's see if we can get some of that action let's see if we're lined up here okay yep just a little bit further up now if this one shots this diamond bonded glass which is supposed to be almost as hard as heavy armor yeah it just one shotted that that's a better example of how powerful those rail guns are and the missile launchers. Yep. Front firing missile launchers. I don't think it actually is capable of broadsiding. Well, then again, those uh, we do have missile launcher turrets, which are capable of pretty much anything. So, yeah. Pretty cool stuff here. I'm getting six frames a second. Good lord, man! And now, finally, our final proper ship here. Um is the isf 2 h Apathy Headhunter MK2 LSG DFL by the Decisive Raindrop. Not the Indecisive one, I'm not sure where I was going with that. But, look at this. <laughs> this sucker looks massively powerful. Ah, I tell you what, I don't, I... This looks more like a flying knife than it does anything else. Look at this, look at this. I love it. I just love the look of this thing. This has got to be my favorite looking small ship ever. And by the way, check it out. Bang, two white stripes. Bang, two white stripes. Bang, red. Bang, red. This would be the perfect fire to go alongside that. Absolutely perfect. Uh, except, well, you know, you look at this ship and you think, oh, that's going to be pretty formidable. Yeah, that's going to be pretty tough to beat, but then... You look at this, it's got like six of these, and you're like, oh, nope, I'm out of here. Absolutely not. No, thank you, Bobtail Short. This is all pointy edges and aggressive hard angles, and just epic, epicness. Look at it. Ah. And yeah, it's even got projectors for those two wing things on the back. So, um,. In case you're wondering, this is, yeah, this is the Apathy Headhunter fighter. It's the fighter customized, uh, it's a customized Apathy fighter, and it links to the original Apathy fighter, which comes with these, uh, awesome looking wings on the side here. Um, yeah, it's just, I can't, I can't get over it. Uh, this fighter is extensively modified from the original and uses batteries as a fuel source rather than uranium is much faster than its predecessor, which, by the way, the speed is holy crap fast. Like, it's ridiculous. Um, and as well, it is more well armored, as you can see by the cockpit view. No peripheral vision at all. <laughs> but its mission, however, remains the same destroy the enemy. Yeah. And it's pretty dang good at that, because look at the speed, first of all. I mean, good lord. This thing just accelerates. It's pure acceleration, guys. This is pure acceleration. The handling is instant. Like, I'm just barely moving my mouse. And it's just turning. It's just turning. This is the best handling ship we've ever had on Space Engineers Weekly Workshop Roundup. I almost plowed straight into you there. Ooh, that would have been bad. The 235,117 kilograms of pure awesome. Just look at this. Look at it. 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 Sickness. All around sickness. Just pointy edges and stuff. Ah, my sign. I've got a huge science fiction bone right now. I'm not going to lie to you guys, I have a huge science fiction bone right now because this is the science fiction nerd's dream. Look at it! It's, it looks like some freaking... I don't know what it looks like. It looks awesome! 
Anyway, com uh, combat abilities. Let's look at those. Oh. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah. It's got the, um, what are those again? The, uh, scatter cans. CS CSD scatter cans. I believe these are more effective in a range of 300 to 1100 meters. So we're gonna actually back up that way, make sure we're not about to whack into anything. Oh well, the series just above us there, so yeah, let's back on up to 300 meters here. Yeah, as you can see, it's got it's basically split shot, almost like a almost like a uh, almost like a shotgun as as far as the spread is concerned. It's got the whole machine gun fire rate sort of deal going on for it. It's just a hail of death. Now it's, ab it's absolutely vicious. Uh, let's see, did we actually tear through the armor there? Oh yeah, handily in fact. Well, I think we tore through it. No, we didn't actually tear through it, but nevertheless, this, this would just be an absolutely great way to whittle other fighters down gradually of like over time and then of course if you're getting impatient you've got the reloadable missile launcher there and uh, yeah just in case you're getting a little impatient bang bang and of course you can also get the original version that's linked to in the description of this version and the wings would just be perfect hard points for well missiles and stuff this is be pretty dang awesome overall. It's just a fantastic looking ship though. That's the big sort of selling point I feel. But yeah, so finally we're moving on to the last item that we have today and that is, well, you're gonna see once we actually get there. Well, you've probably read it by now, but if not, it's a racetrack. Yep. This is, is a racetrack. It's just a racetrack in Space Engineers. No big deal, you know. That's exactly what this game was built for, don't you know? It's racetracks. Racetracks. That's, yeah, exactly. I can't think of anything more logical to put in Space Engineers. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, as you can see, it's just a little simple, simple dilly doo -da sort of thing here. You start that way, and then there's a hairpin. And then, well, if I could control my ship accurately because of the great frame rate. But yeah, so you start uh, going around that hairpin, go through that chicane, down the back straight, around that turn, and then around these hairpins, and right back at the start you are. It's also got a drag strip here for if you want to race your friends. And by the way, this is a world, obviously, and it comes in, um, it comes and uh well it comes uh well inertia dampeners on thank you but it comes with uh online turned on and set to uh four player multiplayer so um you can just race with your friends here on this racetrack and what this <laughs> i've driven like half a lap of it and i crashed off over there and had to re reload the world but yeah it looks like so much fun, just so much fun, especially when you factor in how all the vehicles handle, which we're going to get to that in a second, meaning right now. Yep, these are the two vehicles that come with it, so you can either get, get this sort of low, sporty-looking guy or this big, muscular-looking guy. I'm going to go for the sporty-looking guy, and whee! I'm sort of racing. Yeah, and pulling out of the pit lane. By the way, um, you're supposed to sort of control these guys with the arrow keys. Um, I, yeah, just making it around a lap without crashing is enough, of a, is enough of a challenge. But that's the thing about this. Imagine with like four people on this track, even though there are two cars, you can like copy and paste, obviously. But imagine with four people on this track, you're all racing, sliding side to side. Because the cars handle like shit, pretty much. Excuse the profanity. They they handle very poorly. Do not go off the edge there. 
They handle very poorly indeed. But that just adds to it, I think, because, you know, you're just all bumping around and trying to, uh, trying to get position, just trying to dive bomb up in, uh, dive bomb your friends up into these corners and stuff and just the cars won't handle so you really have to fight it and everything and just yeah a whole bunch of oh my god i'm going way too fast for that stop okay we actually yeah we stopped that's actually pretty incredible these things handle a lot better than i thought they would yeah around this hairpin let's see if we can do it again this is really fun this is really fun I'm not even lying to you guys right now. This is actually legitimately really fun. I'm going way too fast. Gotta turn on the brakes. Gotta go fast. I don't know how the song goes. I, yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't even know how the song goes. I apologize. But, yeah. I'm gonna put it on now. Gotta go fast. Go stop. Go stop. Okay. What is up with my voice? Go stop. Go stop. Go stop. Yeah. <laughs> this is so cool. This is so cool. If you go too fast in some of these, you go off the edge and you have to get back on. So, like, right here. Uh-oh, I've gone too fast. I'm off the edge. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Gotta go up. Gotta go up. Gotta go up. I can't stop. Uh, okay, let's just try that. Okay, yeah. So, see, there is a penalty for screwing up here, which is really... Well, it's... It wouldn't be a game otherwise, would it? I don't know one. <laughs> but yeah, so that's cool. That's just all sorts of awesome. If I could get back up here, yep. Uh, I can't get back up there. Oh well, whatever. So you get the point. It's just a it's a racetrack for friends and things. Inertia dampeners on. Thank you very much. And then of course, not only do we have the circuit, we've also got the drag strip. Like I said. And this pretty bug standard drag strip, you just got two cars over here. Two of them in a lane, apparently. And bang, you land and break all of your knees and stuff. You get into a drag car here. If I could, there we go. And then it's a drag strip, you go really fast in like one direction. Ah, whoa, whoa, okay. What just happened? Oh, well then, I went way too fast, and I just sort of flew off the edge there. The car started freaking out there towards the end. Let's have a, another look at that. Okay, so when I go too fast, the wheels just start freaking out. That's hilarious. That's actually freaking funny. Oh, that's... There's, okay, there's the drag strip. I was wondering where it was. The car just started freaking out there towards the end of the run. And let's have, let's actually just launch at the wall. Let's just launch it at that wall. Come on, stay down, stay down. Woo, bang! Oh, <laughs> I just cleaned straight through heavy armor going like freaking, I don't know how fast. Oh, that was sick. The wheels just pinged off into space there. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. And then there's another part of my car. I want to do that again. I want to do that again. Just fling my car off the edge. And turn inertia dampeners off here. And then get out run, like right the last second. And then yeah, just fling it off into space. Bye. Well, shit. Excuse me. Bye. Have a beautiful time. <laughs> oh, so fun. So much fun to be had with this. It's, absolute, it's absolutely incredible. This would be sick if you just got a bunch of friends over. Like, you could set to uh, online eight players and then have four racing the track and then four racing the track strip. Uh, just copy the cars once or twice. That would be so much fun. That would be so much fun to do with your friends. It's absolutely absolutely incredible yeah it's just such a cool concept these racetracks this is one of like two that i know of that actually like ground-based racetracks the other one um 
this is more themed around Formula One. I may actually do an Epic Mod Showcase with it. But yeah, so looks absolutely very, very cool indeed. This is just... <laughs> who knew that Space Engineers would be a good racing game of all things? It's, yeah, I, I got nothing. I got nothing, guys. Such a cool idea. Such a cool idea. Anyway, so yeah. This uh, this has been an, uh, a pretty good episode. Bit of a long one, too. How you doing, Wally? So, uh, yeah. Actually, guys, I'm thinking of making Wally a mascot. Uh, along with Siri, because mask uh, Siri is... She just is like the show. She just is the show, you know? So, um... Yeah, it would be nice to have you on board as another mascot, Wally. You could just sort of like follow me around while I'm reviewing mods and stuff. That'd be really awesome. Look at you, you're so adorable. You're either... I smiled. I was about to say he's either adorable or nightmare fuel, but... Are you actually... Re <laughs> are you actually reacting to what I'm saying right now? That, that, that was, <laughs> that's hilarious. Okay, let's try this. I was about to say you're awesome. You read my mind. You read my mind. How, how do you do that? Yes, you are awesome. Okay? Uh, kind of, well, not as awesome as Siri because she's a big ship and you're a little one. And I, yeah, no, no offense. I mean, of course, I'm not shippist against, like, small ships or anything. But, yeah. You're cool. You're probably going to be another mascot. Yeah. Hi there, buddy. Uh, friends explore together. Yes, they do. And speaking of friends exploring together, if you like this video, then go ahead and bitch slap that like button. If you really, really liked it and you want to see more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hey, I've been MC Zinman. Siri's been Siri. Wally's been Wally. You've been awesome. And I'll see you guys, actually we'll see you guys in the next video, MCZ out! He's just so adorable, look at him! Smiling, ah. <laughs>